signature warning signal is required on vehicles with air brakes. A warning signal you can see must come on before the air pressure in the tanks falls below 60 psi or one half of the compressor governor cutout pressure on older vehicles. The warning is usually a, a red light. A buzzer may also come on. Another type of warning is the quote-unquote wig wag. This device drops a mechanical arm into your view when the pressure in the system drops below 60 psi. An automatic wig wag will rise out of of your view when the pressure in the system goes above 60 psi. The manual reset type must be placed in the quote unquote out of view position manually. It will not stay in place until the pressure in the system is above 60 psi. On large buses it is common for the low pressure warning devices to signal at 80 to 85 psi. Section 5.1.12 Stop Light Switch Drivers behind you must be warned when you put your brakes on. The air brake system does this with an electronic switch that works by air pressure. The switch turns on the brake lights when you put on the air brakes. Section 5.1.13 Front Brake Limiting Valve Some older vehicles made before 1975 have a front brake limiting valve and a control in the cab. The control is usually marked quote unquote normal and quote unquote slippery. When you put the control in the quote unquote slippery position, the limiting valve cuts the quote unquote normal air pressure to the front brakes by half. Limiting valves were used to reduce the chance of the front wheels skidding on slippery surfaces. However, they actually reduce the stopping power of the vehicle. Front wheel braking is good under all conditions. Tests have shown front wheel skids from braking are not likely even on ice. Make sure the control is in the quote unquote normal position to have normal stopping power. <laughs> Many vehicles have automatic front wheel limiting valves. They reduce the air to the front brakes except when the brakes are put on very hard, 60 psi or more application pressure. These valves cannot be controlled by the driver. Section 5.1.14 Spring Brakes All trucks, truck tractors, and buses must be equipped with emergency brakes and parking brakes. They must be held on by mechanical force because air pressure can eventually leak away. Spring brakes are usually used to meet these needs. When driving, powerful springs are held back by air pressure. If the air pressure is removed, the springs put on the brakes. A parking brake control in the cab allows the driver to let the air out of the spring brakes. This lets the springs put the brakes on. A leak in the air brake system, which causes all the air to be lost, will also cause the springs to put on the brakes. Tractor and straight truck spring brakes will come fully on when air pressure drops to a range of 20 to 45 psi, typically 20 to 30 psi. Do not wait for the brakes to come on automatically. When the low air pressure warning light and buzzer first come on, bring the vehicle to a safe stop right away while you still can control the brakes. The braking power of spring brakes depends on the brakes being in adjustment. If the brakes are not adjusted properly, 
neither the regular brakes nor the emergency or parking brakes will work right. Section 5.1.15, Parking Brake Controls. The newer vehicles with air brakes, you put on the parking brakes using a diamond-shaped yellow push-pull control knob. You pull the knob out to put the parking brakes, spring brakes, on and push it in to release them. On older vehicles, the parking brakes may be controlled by a lever. Use the parking brakes whenever you park. Caution. Never push the brake pedal down when the spring brakes are on. If you do, the brakes could be damaged by the combined forces of the springs and the air pressure. Many brake systems are designed so this will not happen, but not all systems are set up that way, and those that are may not always work. It is much better to develop the habit of not pushing the brake pedal down when the spring brakes are on. Modulating control valves. In some vehicles, a control handle on the dashboard may be used to apply the spring brakes gradually. This is called a modulating valve. It is spring loaded so you have a feel for the braking action. The more you move the control lever, lever the harder the spring brakes come on. They work this way so you can control the spring brakes if the service brakes fail. When parking a vehicle with a modulated control valve, move the lever as far as it will go and hold it in place with the locking device. Dual parking control valves. When main air pressure is lost, the spring brakes come on. Some vehicles, such as buses, have a separate air tank which can be used to release the spring brakes. This is so you can move the vehicle in an emergency. One of the valves is a push-pull type and is used to put on the spring brakes for parking. The other valve is spring-loaded in the quote-unquote out position. When you push the control in, air from the separate air tank releases the spring brakes so you can move. When you release this, the button, the spring brakes come on again. There is only enough air in the separate tank to do this a few times. Therefore, plan carefully when moving. Otherwise, you may be stopped in a dangerous location when a separate air supply runs out. See figure 5.3. Figure 5.3 illustrates a tractor protection valve and emergency trailer brake operation. Tractor protection valve provides air supply, closes automatically if air supply drops when driving. The parking brakes, when applied, close the tractor protection valve and set the spring brakes at the same time. Illustrated are a stop sign looking button to the left called tra trailer air supply reading push to charge not for parking its color is red and you push it to release and you pull to apply for tractor protection there's also illustrated the parking brakes, you pull to apply, you push to release, it is yellow. On it, it reads parking brakes, pull to apply, push to release. In the middle, you have a circular button called the emergency spring brake release. Pull to apply, brakes release, Pull to apply, push to hold, and it's blue, push to hold. Section 
2016 Anti-Lock Braking Systems, ABS. Truck tractors with air brakes built on or after March 1st, 1997 and other air brakes, vehicles, trucks, buses, trailers, and converter dollies built on or after March 1st, 1998 are required to be equipped with anti-lock brakes. Many commercial vehicles built before these dates have been voluntarily equipped with ABS. Check the certification label for the date of manufacture to determine if your vehicle is equipped with ABS. ABS is a computerized system that keeps your wheels from locking up during hard brake applications. Vehicles with ABS have yellow malfunction lamps to tell you if something isn't working. Tractors, trucks, and buses will have yellow ABS malfunction lamps on the instrument panel. Trailers will have yellow ABS malfunction lamps on the left side, either on the front or rear corner. Dollies manufactured on or after March 1st, 1998 are required to have a lamp on the left side. the malfunction lamp comes on at startup for a bulb check and then goes out quickly. On older systems, the lamp could stay on until you are driving over 5 miles per hour. If the lamp stays on after the bulb check or goes on once you are underway, you may have lost ABS control at one or more wheels. In the case of towed units, manufactured before it was required by the Department of Transportation, it may be difficult to tell if the unit is equipped with ABS. Look under the vehicle for the electronic control unit, ECU, and wheel speed sensor wires coming from the back of the brakes. ABS is an addition to your normal brakes. It does not decrease or increase your normal braking capability. ABS only activates when wheels are about to lock up. ABS does not necessarily shorten your stopping distance, but it does help you keep the vehicle under control during hard braking. Subsection 5.1, test your knowledge. Question one. Why must air tanks be drained? Question two. What is a supply pressure gauge used for? Question three. All vehicles with air brakes must have a low air pressure warning signal. True or false? Question four. What are spring brakes? Question five. Front wheel brakes are good under all conditions. True or false? Question six. How do you know if your vehicle is equipped with anti-lock brakes? These questions may be on your test. If you can't answer them all, reread subsection 5.1. 5.2. Do air brake. system is called the primary system. 
The other is called the secondary system. See figure 5.4. Figure 5.4 illustrates air brake system components and location. Single circuit system. Includes main reservoirs, a dry and a wet, tractor parking brake valve, low pressure warning buzzer and switch, one-way check valve, compressor, foot valve, hand valve, pressure gauge, front brakes, highway valve, tractor valve, and then for the trailer, oh, parking brake and emergency brake valve, yellow, and then for the trailer, quick release valve, trailer brake chambers, trailer reservoir, Emergency relay valve, emergency glad hands, tractor protection valve. Before driving a vehicle with a dual air system, allow time for the air compressor to build up a minimum of 100 psi pressure in both the primary and secondary systems. Watch the primary and secondary air pressure gauges or needles if the system has two needles in one gauge. Pay attention to the low air pressure warning light and buzzer. The warning light and buzzer should shut off when air pressure in both systems rises to a
in a vehicle equipped with automatic adjusters. When the pushrod stroke exceeds the legal brake adjustment limit, it is an indication that a mechanical problem exists in the adjuster itself, a problem with the related foundation brake components, or that the adjuster was improperly installed. The manual adjustment of an automatic adjuster to bring a brake pushrod stroke within legal limits is generally masking a mechanical problem and is not fixing it. Further, routine adjustment of most automatic adjusters will likely result in premature wear of the adjuster itself. It is recommended that when brakes equipped with automatic adjusters are found to be out of adjustment, the driver take the vehicle to a repair facility as soon as possible to have the problem corrected. The manual adjust adjustment of an automatic adjuster should only be used as a temporary measure to correct the adjustment in an emergency situation, as it is likely the brake will soon be back out of adjustment since this procedure usually does not fix the underlying adjustment problem. Note, automatic slack adjusters are made by different manufacturers and do not all operate the same. Therefore, the specific manufacturer service manual should be consulted prior to troubleshooting a brake adjustment problem. Check brake drums or discs, linings, and hoses. Brake drums or discs must not have cracks longer than one half the width of the friction area. Linings, friction material, must not be loose or soaked with oil or grease. They must not be dangerously thin. Mechanical parts must be in place, not broken or missing. Check the air hoses connected to the brake chambers to make sure they aren't cut or worn due to rubbing. Step 7, five, section 5.3.3. Step 7, final air brake check. Do the following checks instead of the hydraulic brake check shown in section 2, step 7. Check brake system. Test low pressure warning signal. Shut the engine off when you have enough air pressure so that the low pressure warning signal is not on. Turn the electrical power on and step on and off the brake pedal to reduce air tank pressure. The low air pressure warning signal must come on before the air pressure drops to less than 60 psi in the air tank or tank with the lowest air pressure in dual air systems. See figure 5.5. Figure 5.5 illustrates low air pressure warning devices with uh, dash lights including low air light and a low air drop arm or wig wag. Some vehicles are equipped with a wig wag that drops into the driver's view and will not stay up in place until the desired air pressure is restored. If the warning signal doesn't work, you can lose air pressure and you would not know it. This could cause sudden emergency braking in a single circuit air system. In dual systems, the stopping distance will be increased. Only limited braking can be done before the spring brakes come on. Check that spring brakes come on automatically. Continue to fan off 
the air pressure by stepping on and off the brake pedal to reduce tank pressure. The tractor protection valve and parking brake valve should close, pop out, on, the, on a tractor trailer combination vehicle and the parking brake valve should close, pop out, on the other combination and single vehicle types when the air pressure falls to the manufacturer's specification, 20 to 45 psi. This will cause the spring brakes to come on. Check rate of air pressure buildup. When the engine is, in, is at operating RPMs, the pressure should build from 85 to 100 PSI within 45 seconds in dual air systems. If the vehicle has a larger than minimum air tanks, the buildup time can be longer and still be safe. Check the manufacturer's specifications. In single air systems pre-1975, typical requirements are pressure buildup from 50 to 90 PSI within 30 minutes of the engine at an idle speed of 600 to 900 RPMs. If air pressure does not build up fast enough, your pressure may drop too low during driving, requiring an emergency stop. Don't drive until you get the problem fixed. Test air leakage rate. With a fully charged air system, typically 125 psi, turn off the engine, release the parking brake, and time the air pressure drop. The loss rate should be less than 2 psi in 1 minute for single vehicles and less than 3 psi in 1 minute for combination vehicles. Then apply 90 psi or more with the brake pedal. After the initial pressure drop, if the air pressure falls below, falls more, than 3 psi in 1 minute for single vehicles, more than 4 psi for combination vehicles, the air loss rate is too much. Check for air leaks and fix before driving the vehicle, otherwise you can lose your brakes while driving. Check air compressor governor cutting and cut out pressures. Pumping by the air compressor should start at about 100 psi and stop at about 125 psi. Check manufacturer specifications. Run the engine at a fast idle. The air governor should cut out the air compressor at about the manufacturer's specified pressure. The air pressure shown on by your gauges will stop rising. With the engine idling, Stop, step on and off the brake to reduce the air tank pressure. The compressor should cut in at about the manufacturer's specified cutting pressure. The pressure should begin to rise. If the pressure, if the air governor does not work as described above, it may need to be fixed. A governor that does not work properly may not keep enough air pressure for safe driving. Test parking brake. Stop the vehicle, put the low parking brake on and gently pull against it in a low gear to test that the parking brake will hold. Test service brakes. Wait for normal air pressure. Release the parking brake. Move the park Move the vehicle forward slowly, about 5 miles per hour, and apply the brakes firmly using the brake pedal. Note, any vehicle pulling to one side, unusual feel, or delayed stopping action. This test may show you problems which you otherwise wouldn't know about until you needed the brakes on the road. Subsection.
questions 5.2 and 5.3. Test your knowledge. Question 1. What is a dual air brake system? Question 2. What are the slack adjusters? Question 3. How can you check slack adjusters? Question 4. How can you test the low pressure warning signal? Question 5. How can you check that the spring brakes come on automatically? Question 6. What are the maximum leakage rates? These questions may be on your test. If you can't answer them all, reread subsections 5.2 and 5.3.